Hi, my name is Spencer, and today I'll be reacting to Star Trek Strange New World Season 2, Episode 1. This is one I'm, I'm excited for. I I mean, it's been a minute since I've recorded anything, so I feel a little rusty in terms of recording these things, but uh, I think I think I'll be okay. Uh, the last video that I posted was a reaction to a trailer for this, so if you want to see my hopes and expectations and excitement for the stuff that was in the trailer, Go ahead and check that out, but I don't know. I'll, I'll still touch on a couple things that I hope for this season. Definitely looking forward to seeing more Spock and Chapel. Uh, that was one of the highlights of last season. I'm excited to see the hijinks that happened with Spock. I remember there being something something along the lines of Spock saying uh, he doesn't like hijinks or something. Or, I don't know, I could be misquoting that, misremembering that. Uh, but I, I'm very much looking forward to the hijinks this season. And seeing the situations they put Spock in and uh, seeing Ethan Peck's performance should should be a lot of fun. I really hope that this season will do more for me in terms of Ortegas. It will help me to like the character more. We'll see. I'm excited for the Klingon episode. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to expect this episode, but... I'm pretty sure, I, I don't think this will be the Klingon episode or, I mean, obviously it's not going to be the Lower Decks episode. Uh, they wouldn't do that for the, <laughs> the the season premiere. And I'm pretty sure that one's like later in the season, like episode nine, maybe. I could be wrong about that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to those things, the Klingons and the Lower Decks. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just really looking forward to the season. Uh, there's a lot that the trailers had in them that I have to look forward to. I'm curious about the Una number one coming back situation. I'm, pr I've pr I'm pretty sure I've heard that the her trial will be in episode two. So this will be sort of separate from that, like setting up other stuff. So... That's exciting. I'm curious how that's going to work out. Like I said in the, well, in, in my reaction to the trailer, I'm confused as to how this universe, this Pike, is doing things differently in order to get her back on the crew. Because, I mean, you would think that in the other universe, in the other timeline, that that Pike, that, that Pike would have done everything in his power to also get her back, but apparently was unsuccessful. So, I don't know. I mean... I should. I probably should just accept it and be like, you know, like, oh, it's a different timeline. This Pike's just doing things differently. But like, I don't know. Um, hopefully, it's not something that will bother me in the long run. It's just something that I've had a concern about. And yeah, but I digress. This season looks like a lot of fun, and I am very excited to get into it. But before I do, don't forget to like this video if you like it. And if you have anything to say about this episode or the previous episodes last season. Uh, don't forget to put it in the comments. I appreciate your thoughts and appreciate being able to interact with you guys if I can. Also, if you're not currently subscribed but you like this kind of content, I would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing, especially if you like Star Trek-related stuff. I have been doing a lot of that as new Star Trek has been coming out, and I hope to continue to do that, and I hope you'll stick around for it. I have talked a lot about revisiting old Trek. Uh, maybe not necessarily on the channel. I did, re I did start re-watching next generation as the last season of Picard was coming out but like I stopped I didn't really get very far but I, I would like to rewatch all of the classic Trek at some point and even maybe get back into Discovery I feel like now I could probably go into it with a different mindset and enjoy it for what it is and then eventually if I if I if I do do that and I end up getting to season four which is where I stopped uh, I could possibly react to that on the channel because it would be my first time watching that but if you're not interested in that there's I mean there's other Star Trek shows coming out in a variety of styles uh, that I, I, I I've enjoyed what's what's been coming out so stick around with that whole spiel out of the way I've put off getting into this episode long enough so I think I will go ahead and get into it there must be other lawyers that can hmm. handle I lied about my species on an app. Better call Saul. That's all I'm saying. Saul Goodman of the <laughs> Star Trek universe. I have to try. Just hang in there, number one. That's an order. Pike hmm. out. So I guess Pike's gonna go off and do his own thing while the other, the rest of the crew has stuff to do? We'll never even have to leave space dock. Well, that's not likely. I'm concerned my emotions may impact my judgment. You'll just have to learn to live with it, like we all. I would prefer not to. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> all Vulcan study. Oh, nice. Nice. Love that. And your heart rate is going down. Soothes the soul. If you'll excuse me. 
Hmm. Little tension. I adjusted them. Highly irregular. I mean, if she's the main one at the helm, then I guess I, I guess she has the right to adjust things to her liking. Let me get a secondary comms online. No offense, but the music is very and the sound effects are very TOS vibes. I love it. Did I hear music? What can I do for you, Ensign? <laughs> Cogitar is on the edge of Klingon space. Yes, sir. At first, I thought maybe we will get Klingons this episode. Who is it from? Ma'an, sir. Well. I would say that's relevant. How much do you know about Kajitar 4? It is a dialethium mining. Hmm. Maybe this has something to do with the tension that Pike was sensing. She's gonna have to fend for herself until then. April out. Um, mm, yeah, I think he's probably, probably gonna do it anyways. We must steal the Enterprise. <laughs> I liked, I liked that zoom into, <laughs> into Ortega's face. <laughs> it's good, good stuff. I'm enjoying this. Engineering. No need to look so suspicious. Just pretend like you're doing routine stuff. Like I said in the trailer, I'm not familiar with this actress from anything else, so this is my first experience with her. Titan temperatures around the intermix chamber is the same. Is this the actress's actual voice? Or is she just putting on a voice for this character? To steal the Enterprise? Or do you want to tell me that's not what's happening here? I mean, she seems like she's for it. I am having what you humans call a hunch. A Vulcan with a hunch? That's a new one. And not just... I mean, he is half human. Amanda Grayson's son. Okay, she knows. We can spend a lot of time talking about this. Or we can go. You decide. She seems way too excited for this. Are these guys gonna buy it? Ordering us to make space between the ship and the station. I mean, that works, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think um, they don't think that Spock is would make this kind of decision to steal the Enterprise and go on the mission anyways. I notice you're sure the chief engineer on this mission. Is that why she wants to help? Been a hundred years since I've gone out with engines of my own. Hundred years for the week. Really long story. Well, hundred years is a long time. She is a character. Melanthonite. Guilty as judged. I'm not familiar with that species. You know, everyone in the chair has their thing. I mean, I know what's coming. My last captain liked to say Zoom. <laughs> Zoom is not even that good. No wonder he doesn't have his own show. Or she. I would like the ship to go now. Just the intense look on his face is funny. Are we gonna get any more Pike this episode, or is it just gonna be this story? Nice. Klingons. Bloodwine. I love the classic Klingon look. I mean, it's not, I guess it's not classic because it's not TOS, but you know what I mean. Ooh, another challenger. Or something else? Well, they're already here, so. Astronomical prices. Fortune's on Mr. Daly. I'm liking their outfits. Ensign. <laughs> nice. Oh, I love, I love the Klingon looks. And what would stop me from just taking them from a tiny woman like you? This is an anti-matter detonation switch. You better hope I don't let go. Are you sure? You have no Klingon blood in you. But I need more. I'll see what I can do. Okay, I like this. I like this side of Laan. Enjoying this. Did we call Starfleet? Not until we have solid proof. Yeah, otherwise they'll they'll reprimand you and take you away. <laughs> hmm. Building a Federation style ship from parts. Maybe part maybe parts from the war. That would make sense to me. Start the war all over again. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you ever not carry it? No. What is it? What? Oh, are they like, is this like a genetic modification? Or is it just like an adrenaline rush type of thing? At least tough in their skin, because 
I'm sure punching a Klingon's face is not not a pleasant feeling on your fist. Deck 13. <laughs> that guy folded so quick. I mean, obviously after being very intimidated and physically injured, but still. I really like seeing them fight though. I think it's cool. And I mean, even though they're obviously, they've taken something to enhance their fighting ability, but I'm enjoying this. Okay, Mbenga. Ooh, throwing down. I wonder exa what exactly they took though. Like, we'll s I don't know, maybe they'll tell us. Well, once you get out the airlock, what are you gonna do? Cause there's probably gonna be people outside expecting you to, to try and get out. Or maybe not. Maybe they'll just go into space and then blow you out the airlock. That's what you need uh, EV suits for. All my contacts in the broken circle have vanished. So whatever they're gonna do, it must be something that's... Well, there they are. Destroy this ship. Okay, that's a good plan. I mean, obviously I want them to live, but... And they will, because plot armor, but... Still, good plan. I think the extremists intend to use the ship to attack the Klingons as a way of reigniting hostilities with the Federation. I theorize that... Logical. Got it! Nope. Not much to work with here. If only I didn't know that they were going to survive. I'm still curious how they're going to do it, though. It'll take almost a minute for us to freeze to death. Don't you worry. We'll pass out after 15 seconds. I know it's a terrible idea. You just have to hope that someone's going to catch you. There's only time for one shot. Bolton Torpedo's locked on the Federation ship. Full spread. Mr. Spock. Going to make the call? Nothing, sir. Well, you don't have much time. I can't believe this is how we're going to die. We've got not of worse. No. Yeah, I feel like this is pretty bad. Mr. Spock, it's now or never. Fire photon torpedoes. Well, he thinks he killed his friends. And, I mean... Nurse Chapel, kind of more than friends. What does this look, what does this look like to the other to the other Klingon ship? You do not die. <laughs> nice. Lieutenant Spock, <laughs> we're being hailed by the Klingon captain. What is the meaning of this? Yeah, you better clear this up. I know a man's truth. Only when I look into his eyes, face to face. Ah, this is where the the scene of them drinking together happens. You're no typical Vulcan. <laughs> no. It would seem I'm not. <laughs> nice. I like this. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm sure Pike would have a field day learning about this story. Are you actually Lampenite? Oh, a couple of drinks and you get personal. Let <laughs> it fly, boy. You know your mother was <laughs> one of the first people I came out to. I did not. Interesting. It's boredom. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> She's funny. I like her. And I like I like uh I like Spock's performance here. <laughs> Great. You risked hundreds of lives and you was peace in the quadrant. You could lower the volume of your voice, Admiral. <laughs> Hangover. Molly's letting himself feel. Interested to see where this goes. I have no words for what I feel. You care. That Those are some words. He just kept us from potentially having to defend two fronts at the same time. Okay. What's the other front? And if this war happens... What? We need every good officer we've got. Gorn. 
Oh. Huh. Interesting. Aw. Oh. Okay. That's... Oh, that's getting me a little teary-eyed. <sighs> Solid start to a season, I would say. I would definitely say it took me a second at the beginning to get sort of adjusted back into it. I don't know. I feel, there was something about the Pike and Una interaction that felt weird to me. And maybe it was just because like I, I needed to get back into the, the mindset of this show. I look forward to seeing more of that in the next episode. And... I think I will be more prepared for it, and it'll help me feel more comfortable. But yeah, solid first episode of the season. Great way of introducing a new engineer, at least I think so. I'm not familiar with her species, but Pelia seems like a fine addition to the crew. I look forward to seeing her, her interact with everyone. And although Hammer is still missed, I think she'll bring some good stuff to the to the to the crew and. To that sort of thing so i don't know i thought i thought they did a good job of giving her enough time to establish herself give a little bit of backstory on her and like her people uh having been on earth unknown until the 22nd century i thought that was a, a neat little tidbit and and she has a personal connection to spock's mom which is fun i wonder if they will ever be a mention between the two of them about Michael Burnham? I mean, it's possible. Still the same universe, although these Klingons are visually much different than what we saw in Discovery, but it's it's definitely a pleasant difference, I guess you could say, to me. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there were some people who liked the Discovery Klingons, and I mean, no disrespect to them and their opinions, but I'm, I, I would say that bringing these these Klingons back is definitely a welcome a welcome thing I don't know I was kind of part of me was kind of hoping that we would get and I mean it's still open to the future there's still things that could happen I was kind of hoping that we would get sort of the multiple kinds of Klingons around like just some maybe some smooth head Klingons from TOS I'm glad we're getting TNG and onward Klingons again and then I mean even if I wasn't the biggest fan of Discovery Klingons, I think it would be really cool if they incorporated all of them. Maybe not. They, I mean, maybe it'd be too extreme to have or too much to ask for them to all be in the same room together. But it'd be interesting to see them acknowledge the different designs uh, over the years in in that way. Uh, but I really liked seeing the Klingons in this episode. And yeah, I mean. For the most part, I would say that it was, or the Klingons, the way they looked and the way they dressed was pretty much everything I hoped for and expected from, I mean, what we know and love about Klingons from previous Trek. Although, I don't know, there were a couple times, okay, so obviously I'm sure Klingons can come in all shapes, colors, uh, sizes, whatnot. It, it's, it is weird to see light skin Klingons in this style. I mean, we had Vok in Discovery was like pale skin, but that was like a different style. And this one, it's 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 different in that it's like white people and they maintain the white people's skin tone with with the Klingon makeup and everything. I don't hate it. Like I I I, I it was just like it was it was a reminder to me that in classic trek the klingons were not white or at least i don't know they they were they were color was added to the klingons even for white actors and actresses so it was just a little a little weird at first but i, I i'm i'm cool with it i think it's awesome that they're not i mean obviously it's a lot better that they're not adding color to white people's faces because that is historically not a good thing. Which isn't to say that I think that classic Klingons are problematic. At least not TNG onward. I, I, I will acknowledge that that there was definitely race racism involved in the original series Klingons. And the way that they were portrayed. And the styles that they had. Whether, that, whether it was in good or bad taste. It's not for me to say. I, I'm just glad that they're allowing people to maintain their skin tones. <laughs> as Klingons. 
Which also isn't to say, yes, finally, white representation. I definitely not, definitely not trying to say that. I don't know. I think if you're watching this, you, you probably understand what I'm trying to say here and where I'm coming from with, with this. And I don't know, maybe I'm just forgetting some lighter skinned Klingons from previous Trek and you can totally correct me. I am totally fine with that. Please do. I hate, I hate, uh, to be wrong and to, and to be uneducated. You know, I, I would like to be educated if, if it is necessary. But the point I'm trying to make here is really cool that they're blending the old with the new and I could definitely tell that there were some more modern takes to the Klingon design and I definitely felt that there was some discovery influence in some of their outfits and, and whatnot. But overall it was very welcome to see the Klingons back in their full glory and I wouldn't mind seeing other iterations of Klingons make appearances as well. We got more Spock and Chapel than I was expecting in this episode. I don't hate it. I'm always down for romance. I really liked seeing Spock's internal, well, I mean, I mean, you can't really see much of an internal struggle. Uh, we got to see, we got to see some of his internal struggle with his emotions and trying to find a balance between his Vulcan upbringing and what he learned from last season with Nurse Chapel and his emotions. And, uh, I don't know, they seem pretty, I mean, they, they seem like they're pushing the Spock and Chapel romance pretty strongly from the get-go. I wasn't expecting it to be so sudden, so strong. I mean, we did get a lot last season, but I was, I don't know, I was expecting it to be a little more subtle and then maybe get into more uh, strong emotion from both of them. But hey, I'm here for it. I, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to concern myself too much with the canon as it, as it is established in classic Trek and this sort of situation at this point i have faith in the writers of the show because i i like the show enough that i do have faith in them that it'll all work out uh and make sense in the end for star trek canon as a whole but yeah uh spock's emotions it's nice to see him open up with pelia to be a non-vulcan vulcan with the klingons i i don't know i just wasn't expecting so much emotion from him this episode uh, which is which is cool. I, I wonder if he'll close up some more towards the end of the show, just because he wasn't super emotional in TOS. But like I said, I'm gonna try to have faith in the writers about the canon type of stuff. I like that we've given him his instrument. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what that instrument's called. I want to say I, I know it's not a lute, but I, I want to say lute just for brevity and for simplicity. But I really like that we've gotten to see that. Um, I really loved the reference earlier in the episode with Ahura being like, did I hear music? And just just referencing like that in TOS, that they, that they do have, that they accompany each other uh, musically. And, and I, I thought that was great. Fun, fun little Easter egg, fun, fun reference. Honestly, I did not mind Ortegas in this episode at all. I was worried. I mean, I've been worried since season one because wasn't a big fan of her quips i wasn't a big fan of her i don't know to me some of the some of the stuff that she says and the way she behaves on the bridge can be a bit cringe to me but i didn't get any of that this episode so i am optimistic for that <laughs> i thought that everything she said everything she added to the scenes that she was in those were appropriate and made sense for the character Maybe I'm just getting used to it, but I didn't. I didn't find anything painfully cringy in this episode for that. Uh, I mean, just in all at all in general. But that specifically was something I was concerned about with Ortegas. I'm excited to get more. I mean, we didn't get a whole lot this episode, but I'm excited to get more Ensign Ahura. Hopefully, I hope we'll get to see her rise through the ranks because I know she's not an ensign in TOS. Also, I'm pretty sure, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> The uh, Lower Decks crossover is going to be called Those Old Scientists, which is a reference to that Lower Decks made earlier in one of the earlier seasons, referencing the original series and just making a joke at the acronym TOS and making it canon, sort of canon that it's Those Old Scientists. It's so funny to me. I love, I love Lower Decks and, and what they've done with that. I just, I just had to mention that I, th I, I love that connection that they're doing with 
the title of the episode, if that's what they're doing. I hope I'm not mistaken. But if I am, it is what it is. But yeah, uh, I got off track. Ugh, I got off topic a little. I'm excited to see Ahura and her progress in the series. I think the actress is doing a great job. And I loved, really loved that shout out in memory of uh, Nichelle uh, at the end there. She really did pioneer. Oh gosh, I'm getting a little emotional. Uh, uh, she really did pioneer television and I always love hearing that story about her and Martin Luther King Jr. I'm not going to tell the story because it's not my story to tell. If if you want to know about it, look it up. Uh, it's a great story. I, I, I just love that they honored her at the end there with that. And I know she means a lot to a lot of people. So, Or she meant a lot to a lot of people. And she still does. So, good stuff. I like seeing Dr. Mbenga and, Cha and Chapel together, working together, um, seeing them, the rapport that they have with each other. I liked that we got some more of... Mbenga's backstory with the Klingon War and I don't know I was a little confused at at one point when he was talking about being on like I guess a moon a Klingon moon or something maybe I'm mistaken about that but a Klingon adjacent planet or sphere of whatever um you know what I'm trying to say I was a little confused by that was it like a human colony that he was on that the Klingons attacked and that was the the rain blood coming down I mean, it sounded like it was something that you would have to be a Klingon to, like, at least the Klingon that was there implied that it was, like, something that, like, you would have to be a Klingon to understand, like, what it's like to be on this planet or this moon. So for a second, I was a little confused as to, like, whether Mbenga was, like, helping the Klingons at some point, and maybe just felt, or maybe he felt betrayed, or maybe he sympathized with the Klingons at some point, but then, I don't know, but then the episode kept going, and then it was like, oh, he's... Like, he's, he's anti-war with the Klingons, and he, he it seemed like he had some prejudices towards them. So, I don't know. It was a bit confusing, but I think I think I understand that it's... He wasn't a Klingon sympathizer. Like, I, I, I'm just a little confused. Maybe you guys know more about that than I do. Or maybe you guys picked up more than I did. Sometimes I don't pick up on every detail while I'm reacting to things. So please, please clarify if you can. But I really liked seeing Mbenga's, getting more of Mbenga's backstory, getting more depth to his character. I mean, after last season with his daughter, it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of sad that he's a little more, more tragic than that. But I mean, everyone had to deal with the Klingon War, so it's not totally surprising that he would have some trauma from that, like everyone else. But yeah, great to see Mbenga and Chapel's friendship and getting to know him more. I look forward to seeing that dynamic moving forward. Uh, I don't know if we'll get as much as we did in this episode because I, I, I don't know, I'm sure they want to diversify the episodes and make sure that everyone gets like a time in the spotlight. I know last season we didn't get any Ortegas and uh, I think this season we're supposed to. I'm looking forward to it, but I, I hope I hope that we'll, we'll still have time for those crew interactions like that with him and Chapel and maybe him and other people as well. But yeah, I think I think those are all my thoughts for this episode. I apologize for talking your ears off. Hopefully I can edit this down to be a bit more condensed uh, and easy to take for viewers. I, I don't know the word. I can't think of the word. I know there is a word. Anyways, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. I know next episode is supposed to be the trial of number one and... I'm assuming that'll all be resolved by the end of that episode. Maybe not completely. I'm sure there will be some some tension, perhaps, with Starfleet with that. But maybe they'll make an exception because of this incoming threat of the Gorn. Excited to see how that plays out with the Gorn and whatnot. I really hope that they don't... I don't know. I, I worry that they're going to overdo the Gorn like they have with like the Borg. And I, I don't. I just don't want to become fatigued with the Gorn. But I'm assuming this will this will all tie into eventually becoming peaceful with the Gorn. We'll see. I'm I'm excited to see how this works out. Apparently, in that timeline future, with Pike still being captain of the Enterprise, uh, with that contact with the Romulans, uh, apparently the the Gorn situation is all worked out by then. And obviously, we know from the original series that that is the case, that there isn't any tension between them and the Gorn, right? Uh, I mean, there is the encounter with Kirk and uh, the Gorn captain, but the way that they portrayed the Gorn in this series has been 
more animalistic, that they're not as, I don't know, reasonable to deal with. So I'm, I'm curious if and how that that's going to work out and how La'an with her previous trauma is going to tie into that and how she will deal with that. Uh, speaking of La'an, I forgot, to, I totally forgot to mention, uh, it was nice to see her in this episode, nice to get her back, um, nice to have the continuity from last season. And yeah, I think, I think, I mean, and I didn't really have much to say, much to say about her. That's probably why I didn't mention her before. But anyways, looking forward to the next episode and the future episodes. Don't know exactly what to expect besides what we've seen in the trailers and what has been put out on social media. I hope that I can get this video edited and, and posted as soon as possible. But I thank you guys for your patience. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode in the comments. Let me know if you agree with my opinions of this episode. And it's totally cool if you don't. We're bound to, to differ in some ways. But I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. And I really hope this doesn't have any issues with copyright claims and CBS. I know they're they're very they're they're very much sticklers for that. And I mean I get it, but like hopefully I can get this edited down to a point that it is safe. <laughs> and I don't have to re-upload, because that is it's always a bummer, especially because I lose engagement. Like the the numbers still count for my channel, but it's it's not the same. I'm not gonna get the same amount of engagement reposting a video that I that I did for the original video, and it it, it really sucks. But that's just how it is, and, and like I I try to while I don't agree with completely with their strictness of their content, it is what it is. I gotta respect it. And I hope, I hope that there aren't any issues. I'm going to do my best to be preventative with that. But if it ends up being the case that I have to, I hope that you guys will uh, at least show a little support to my, to the reposted video. I appreciate those of you who have in the past with, uh, whether it be Picard episodes or uh, just reposted videos of uh, Strange New World Season 1 or any other Trek, honestly. Because it, it, it happens with Star Trek unfortunately. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for uh, your support and your patience and me getting videos posted and edited and, and whatnot. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which is pretty dang exciting. Hopefully we will cross that threshold soon and it will continue to grow from there. But yeah, I feel like I've spoken enough for this video. Thank you again for, for watching. I'm looking forward to the next episode and hopefully I will see you guys then.